Rakat the Yahoah, Rakat the Yahoah Shai, Koholoyim la Yahoah, Bahasham, Yahoah Shai, Barachaha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahoah is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barachaha Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, all is in charity. Shabbat Shalom. <coughs> <clears throat> this is Brother Mathati from the Great Millstone Camp, the Branch on Des Moines. And um, I'm going to just play this little clip and get right into it. After that, you have suffered. See, suffering is a requirement in this truth. That's a lesson right there for somebody who wants it. Suffering is a requirement in this truth. And, and that's a true statement. You know, suffering is a requirement within this walk of ours. Right. This is the book of uh, Acts. We get right into it. This is the book of Acts, chapter 14 and verse 22. It says confirming the souls of the disciples. Right. When you go into that word confirming is to establish or strengthen. The word literally means con with firm with 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 strength. So it's strengthening the souls of the disciples, you see. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. See, why was why must we be strengthened continually? Because of the things that we have to go through. This is um how's it worded? How's it worded? Appointed. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians <clears throat> 3, and I'll start at 1. It says, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timothy as our brother and minister of the Heavenly Father and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Yahweh Shai to establish you, see, to confirm you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions, right, the sufferings, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass. And ye know, you see. So Paul is writing unto, unto, unto Thessalonica, unto the Thessalon Thessalonians. So like I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> you know, he's writing unto the Thessalonians and sent Timothy to go strengthen them. To check on their faith, to check on their spirit because of the afflictions and the manifold tribulations that we're going to suffer being a part of this truth, man. Yep, Acts 14. That's a good one. Philippians 1 and 14. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So the example of Paul and what he was going through and how he continued in the faith would strengthen other men who heard about those things. And it's the same thing as us. This is 2 Timothy 3 and 12. It says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Hamashiach Yahawashai shall suffer persecution. Whether it be from your family, whether it be from this society as a whole, or whether it be uh, uh, um, uh, the mental battles we have to go with, or, or the financial battles, or whatever it may be within this walk of ours. You see, it's all a part of this truth. So going back, <clears throat> Acts 14 and 22 confirming the souls of the disciples and, and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father see that is a requirement why is that because we have to be purged <clears throat> even our Lord Yahweh Shai was perfected through his sufferings this is Hebrews 2 and 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. You see, so if our Lord Yahweh was perfected through the things he went through, how much more are we <laughs> right? So this is a rite of passage, man, because we have to be purified. This is the book of um, Malachi. I passed it. Malachi. Three and two. It says, But who I started one. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, being John the Baptist, right? When he came on the scene, he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek 
shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, being our Lord Yahweh Shai, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. So those are cleaning agencies, right? A refiner's fire, it, pure, it purges out the impurities of the metal. And like fuller's soap, soap is what cleanses, you see? And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh an offering in righteousness. That's why it's written in Sirach, the second chapter. This is the book of Sirach. Chapter two and verse one, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, for these afflictions, for these tribulations. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make thy haste in time of trouble because we're being perfected in those moments that we're in the fire. You see, <clears throat> cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You see, so we endure chastisement. We, the Lord dealing with us as with sons. That's written in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And within that chapter as well, it says that the suffering uh, um, of the present time is not joyous, but grievous. But it yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness, man. You see, that's why in Romans 5, it says what? We glory in tribulations. We glory in these afflictions and these different trials. Why? Because it worketh patience. And patience worketh experience. And experience worketh hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of the Most High shed abroad through the Holy Spirit, man. That's Romans, the fifth chapter. The first couple of verses. You see? So going through these trials and tribulations, going through these certain situations, it's what strengthens us knowing that we were appointed to this and that there's a purpose behind it. So that increases our faith when the Lord brings us through it. You see, that shows the strength of Yahweh Shah within us, man. This verse three, I'm gonna read it again. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And it's also written in the book of Isaiah. Right. This is the book of. Uh, Isaiah 40. Forty eight. This Isaiah forty eight and ten it says, Behold, I have refined thee. What is that word refined? It's the Hebrew word uh Tazarap. Tazarapa, Tazarap. To melt, refine, or test, right? <laughs> uh, that word test is synonymous with uh to be tried. Lord said we he he trieth us in the fire through these trials and tribulations. You see? To smelt, refine, to test, test and prove true. You see that? That is refined. So what the Lord is bringing us through is what is written in Sirach, the sixth chapter. It says, prove a friend. Matter of fact, let's grab that. This is Sirach six and verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, did not Yahweh I say, ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. So as long as we're abiding in the, in the word of Yahweh we're abiding in the proper doctrine while still suffering and going through whatever we have to go through. That is the test. To see if we truly trust and believe in him is verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So what we're, we're going through the proving process. You see. To see if we're worthy to truly be called friends, to be called brothers. Let's go back. Back in Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. You see, and this is our lot as Israelites. Let's get the book of second Edris, chapter seven. And let's start at one. It says, and when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel, which had been sent unto me the nights afore, And he said unto me up Edris, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. See, these are similitudes. These are analogies that the angel was given unto Edris. 
that's meant for us today so we can understand that we got to go through the narrow. We got to go through the straight gate as it is written in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Straight is the gate. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get that. This is the book of uh, Matthew 7 and 13. See, a lot of people don't endure the test. They don't endure the trying process, man. Which is why we have to abide in his word and pray unto Yahweh that he continues to fill us with his strength to get through these things. See, it's not of our own will that that that, that, that we're, we get out of these trials, these tribulations, these temptations. It's not of our own will that we don't fall. <laughs> you know, it's the Lord that's upholding us, man. That shows forth his strength in us, that he's dealing with us, which increases our confidence, our faith, our hope within him. It's Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. See, narrow, straight. Right? And you go into it, it, it means a position of difficulty. So it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult pathway, man. Going back to the analogy that Angel was using in 2nd Edger 7. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. That's why a majority of the, the world follows after the easy path, man. You see? But not the elect. They are going to give diligence to make their call an election sore. So they're going to labor through those straight things. This verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. See, a majority of people like the broad way. They like the easy way. They don't like going through the straight and narrow way, the, the difficult way. They want things done easy. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it, man. Few there be that find it. And there's another one in the book of Luke where Yahweh Shai answered a man. A man asked him, Lord, shall there be few saved? And Yahweh Shai answered him and said, strive to enter in at the straight gate because many shall strive to enter in and shall not be able. You know? So we have to seek the Lord while he may be found. We have to abide and, and pray for his strength in these things we suffer in now in order to endure. You see? But let's go back. Second Edra 7, verse 5 again. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water, and only and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Lines up with uh, the Philippians, the second chapter. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. In Galatians, the sixth chapter, it says, let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself and not in another. We're going to be delivered off another man's faith. We're not going to be del delivered off another man's works. <laughs> you see? We're going to be delivered according to our own faith, according to our own works. You see? Verse 9. It says, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he, and if he, I'm sorry, if he never shall pass the danger that is set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. So this is our portion. We have to suffer these straight things, man. And the Lord ordained it so. This is the book of Romans chapter 8. This is the Romans 8 and verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, meaning we were subject unto this flesh. We were subject unto the battle, battling these thoughts, battling these demons. As it is written in going back to that seventh chapter, continue to read down in, a, I believe it's the 54th verse. It says, this is the condition of the battle that man that is born upon the earth shall fight. So we have to go through those straight things. We have to go through those trials, those tribulations, those certain situations to perfect us in the spirit. You see, and the Lord set this all up from the beginning. Why? Let's read. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope so that our hope, so that our faith is in him. You see, completely in him. And, and not of ourselves.
completely in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. You see that? So this is our hope. Matter of fact, what is that? Oh, this just popped in my mind. Let me see. This is my hope and my affliction. What? Why am I? Hold on, Salakia. I don't know if I'm mixing precepts together, but my mind is is racing right now. Because I, I, I believe there is one where it says this is a, uh, is it comfort in affliction? That's why this word is called the comforter, man, because these things gives us hope. We read, we, we suffer these things and we can read it in the scriptures and we understand that there is a purpose for it. There it is. Psalms 119 and 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. So it's through this word. You see? And ultimately, once again, it's for a benefit. When we read the book of Lamentations, this Lamentations, is it the third chapter? Let me see. Yeah, this is... um. Lamentation chapter three. <clears throat> and I started 14. All of it is good, but I started 14. It says, I was a derision to all my people in their song all the day. Right. Is that not a trial or tribulation? People talking shit against you. Right. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes. So Jeremiah is lamenting about the hell he catching. Right. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And don't, don't it seem like that at certain times? We be catching hell, right? And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. So when we going through these things, it's meant to humble us to, 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 to seek Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah more. And this is the perfection in our spirit that's taking place. To cleave to the Lord more and more through these trials, through these tribulations. You see? Verse 21. This I call to my mind, therefore have I hope. Matter of fact, I got to get it now, man. This is the book of Romans. I quoted it earlier, but it's more powerful, man, when we read it. It's the book of Romans 5 and 3. Matter of fact, I'll start at 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, while God's talking about they keep the law perfectly, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with our God through our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Heavenly Father. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience. See, you gain that experience because you're learning how to suffer. That's what the word patience mean. Patience means sufferings. You see? But we're learning the experience of how, of how to suffer. Like Apostle Ramla uh, made the statement within his lesson. Apostle the Hall told them years ago, man, you have to learn to love to suffer. Right? And that sounds crazy. But, but when the spirit gives us the increase, gives us the understanding of these things, then we're able to embrace it. Because why? This is our comfort and our affliction. <laughs> you see? It says, in patience, experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of the heavenly father is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. You see that? So through these trials and tribulations, these situations, it shows forth the love of the Lord in us, man, when he delivers us out of it. it says, no temptation has taken you what's common in a man, but with the temptation, the Lord shall make a way to escape it. Going back to that Hebrew 12, once again, when we endure chastisement, the Lord is dealing with us as, as, as with sons. That's why the scripture says, faint not when we are chastised of him. 
We're going through these things now so that we don't be judged with the world, you see? So when we put these precepts into the into perspective and we understand these things, it makes the suffering and things we're going through that much bearable, man. This is the comfort in our affliction. You see, going back, Lamentations 3 and 21 again. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. You see? So when we have a certain situation, a trial, a tribulation that we find ourselves in, and the Lord gives us the strength and delivers and delivers us out of it, that shows forth his love, his mercy toward us, his strength within us, which increases our hope in him. You see? Verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness the lord is my portion saith my soul therefore will i hope in him yahweh basham yahweh shai is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him through all the trials through all the tribulations <laughs> through all the circumstances right continue to seek the lord's face man verse 26 it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of yahweh basham yahweh shai and you could continue to read, Dom, and it's a, you know, these things uh, uh, put puts things into perspective for us, man. You know, that's why it's important to be uh, uh, within the scriptures, man. That's another title, Lord's will. I can do uh, inspired through the Apostle Ram Live through his lesson, consumed in Yahweh Shai, man. You know, we got to be consumed in this truth, man. We got to be baptized, com completely emerge within this work, you know, so. I feel like, you know, that's 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 a good place to end it there. So, Lord willing, I hope this was edifying to what Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baracha HaKodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel and truth and necessity, always in charity. To you few sisters that listen and learn in silence as well. Shabbat Shalom.